Good morning, changed America. Wow. Bear with me. Um, this is Tommy Jordan, for those that aren't haven't tuned in before. I normally look better. I literally just rolled out of bed. It is, uh, it's noon on Wednesday. Um, for those that don't know, I just did an eight and a half hour live stream last night, which exhausted me. Um, we covered the election. And I was excited this morning to get up and look at the national news. Um, I'll be honest, I kind of was just unsure what to expect. But um, I'm just going to take a quick minute to, rec- to put these thoughts down while they're fresh in my head. The uh, Obama campaign today, and I'm not picking on anyone here. Um, they're reeling from the results from last night uh his cabinet members are you know tweeting things that i'm surprised his cabinet members would tweet but one of the resounding thoughts coming out of the president obama white house between himself and his staff seems to be that they're just amazed america went this way that You know, because electing Donald Trump is a 100% repudiation of everything Obama stands for. I mean, you couldn't actually give President Obama a bigger slap in the face than to have elected a man that is completely anti almost everything he spent eight years trying to do. I just learned this morning that President Obama had planned on buying a house close to the White House, a few blocks away. And uh, working closely, you know, with the uh, the new Hillary government for the next couple of years, and uh, you know, yeah, it it very much was going to be a Obama term number three, and of course, that's not going to happen now. And Hillary's reeling, and the government's reeling, and the White House is reeling. And I guess I just wanted to give my thoughts from a regular American while they're fresh in my head because some of what they said resonated with me, and I think maybe what I think about it will resonate with someone else. But the fundamental mistake I think President Obama made is that he walked in the White House wanting change, but he wanted his change his vision for America, his vision for a multinational, multicultural, multi-everything. And he wanted to lead America where he wanted it to go. And that's the wrong approach. You should have taken America where it wanted to go. It's not a president or commander-in-chief's right nor responsibility to shape this country in their own image. It's their responsibility to shape this country in the image of its people. Um, I think that was a failing he had. And again, I'm not picking. I'm just I'm just saying what's on, on my mind right now. This is all kind of clear in my head. Or at least it's in it. It's in my head. I, will, I won't swear it's clear. But it's all here right now, and I'm trying to get it out. And so my message to Mr. Obama as to why, you know, why did this happen? It happened because you didn't listen. You, I'm not going to say he was a bully, because I don't think he was. He was a, um, I mean, if he was a bully, he was a very, uh, very mild one, one from behind the scenes, but you pushed Obamacare and America didn't want it. You pushed a pro-Muslim agenda, in my opinion, in a lot, a lot of small ways. Not, not saying you're, I'm not, I don't believe he's, <clears throat> I don't believe he has a Islamist agenda by any means. A lot of people do. I don't, I just think he went too far, too fast, too hard, and nobody wanted that. 
well, the people that did want it weren't the majority, and you should have listened to the majority, not the ones that are paid to tell you what you want to hear. Um, that's probably a big problem in Washington. Uh, you're surrounded with people every day who whose sole job it is to fulfill your agenda and, and, and maybe tell you why your agenda is so great and pat you on the back like a no kid left behind, you know, approach. It, 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 you know, it's okay. That's what we want. It's not. What Donald Trump did, and people are going to argue this, but you really can't argue it. You can try to argue it, but you, you'll be wrong. <laughs> Donald Trump is what America wanted. Hands down, it is. He won the vote. He won the popular vote. He won the electoral vote. He is what we asked for. We specifically said we could have more of this or we can have this. We want this. And so that's what we're going to get. I do applaud Mrs. Clinton for her speech that she gave this morning. It was as conciliatory as it could probably be and be heartfelt and honest. And uh, that was probably one of the, that was probably the hardest speech she ever had to make. And tomorrow, Thursday, Obama has to meet with Trump in the White House for the first time and uh, shake hands and pretend it's all, you know, not a problem, which quite frankly, I think it's a joke. It is a problem, but that's between them to figure out. So, leaving a message here for the future president or his staff would be useless. They're not going to read this or listen to this. They're not going <laughs> to. I don't expect Donald Trump to ever see my YouTube channel. Maybe some of you out there will, and so maybe you can take this to heart. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to like the president that we have. I certainly didn't like the last one that we had. Um. But you owe it to yourself, it's your country, to work within the realm of community and to work within the realm of, or in the spirit of partnership and love for the things you want to see in life, to make them happen. You have an opportunity here. You're going to see a lot of press Um, that Donald Trump is going to reverse this country. He hates women. He's not going to support women's rights. He hates gays. He hates blacks. He hates any minority you can think of. He doesn't care about the underprivileged. He doesn't care about the elite. They're going to say he hates everything. That's what they do with every candidate. It generates news cycles. All you can do is people is try to work with what you've got. If you go out there and approach this with, I'm going to do my best to make this president's life a a miserable living hell, and I'm going to set fire to my communities, and I'm going to burn cars, and I'm going to break into local convenience stores and loot them, and, and I'm going to kill people, and I'm going to splash graffiti on public buildings, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors. You have the opportunity to thrive in the most interesting four years we have had since the day I was born. America spoke last night and said, we do not like what we've been dealing with We do not like where our country is. These are the values we want to go after. And quite frankly, I personally am glad it did. I realize that puts me only in about a 52 or 53 percent majority because, I mean, that's about where Clinton, where Trump won by. He didn't win by 80 percent. He was more of the country wanted his values than wanted Hillary's, but not by some ridiculous landslide. Don't don't fool yourselves. He didn't win a stunning victory that was predicted. 
he was the underdog that pulled out. And what that means is that everyone that thought they knew America thought wrong. The White House admitted, we just didn't see this coming. We never thought it could happen. And if they never thought it could happen, then they never had their finger on the pulse of what America really wants. They thought they did. What they actually had was, this is what we want. We need to make America want it. No, America knew what it wanted all along. You just didn't listen. So now, America got what it asked for. At least if the marketing and the advertising on the outside of the shiny package is to be believed. Now we have to open that package and unwrap it, set it on the mantle, and see what it's going to do. Do I think Donald Trump faces some challenges of immense proportions? Yeah, I do. I think he's going to face the same challenges overseas that he faces here. Therefore, I think that it's really important that we here get behind him, show some solidarity, show some unity, and start making things better. You don't have to like every single thing he stands for to improve your own country. I don't like everything he stands for. Doesn't mean I'm going to sit around and whine and complain on Facebook and Twitter for the next four to eight years and not do anything about it. That's a childish, asinine, liberal approach to a problem that solves nothing. I mean, the, we have a chance here. Um, it's unknown. I mean, as of right now, it is it is November 9th, 2016, when I record this. And I hope I can look back at this in a couple years and go, whew, I was right. I may look back at this and go, wow, what an idiot. But regardless, this is the world we live in. It's what we got. If you voted for it, pat yourself on the back, take a relaxing breath. I did. <laughs> Just sit back a minute and go, Whew. it's over. I mean, wow. If you didn't vote for it, do today what I was prepared to do yesterday. And I faced a very real chance of having to do today. And that was sit back and go, okay, just for a minute, I'm just going to sit here and accept that this sucks. <laughs> it's not what I wanted. Okay, now, I'm over it. You can't change it. Let's move forward and find ways. And find ways now. Find ways right now to improve or to, to start making progress on improving things you want to improve. I hope, I do hope we see a lot less political correctness with Donald Trump. I think that's going to be the case. And I think that may be one of the most refreshing things America can look forward to. He seems to call it like he sees it, which is a, tra a trait I respect because I call it like I, I see it. He resonates with the common person. Which is funny because he's never been the common person. Um, he has found a way to resonate with blue-collar workers and with disenfranchised people and fed-up people. So he at least understands the right words to tug at your heartstrings and get you to vote for him. Hopefully he actually understands the thoughts and feelings behind those words and can relate to them. Or can put people in charge that can. And he'll make progress on those fronts. We have, uh, we have an interesting 60 days or so ahead of us before he gets inaugurated. I hope America makes something of it. I hope you don't go out and just start looting cities and burning buildings because you're just going to hurt yourself.
and those around you. So America, stay strong. Get up. Knock the dust off. And prepare to have a chance to fix what you think has been wrong for so long. This is your opportunity. A, it's your opportunity to fix the things you think are wrong. But B, it's also your opportunity. And don't be a gloating bastard when you do this. It's your opportunity to show the world and those that disagreed why your idea was a good one. We wanted all this. And when I say we, I mean the, the, the over 50% majority wanted this. But remember, a large portion of our country did not. Not a majority, but still a large portion. If I had to put it in terms of numbers, I'd say it's probably like 55, 45. So the 55% won. But the 45% is still a respectable size minority that needs to be considered because you can't rule the country without them. So don't go out and celebrate and throw your Trumpisms in everyone's face. Go out and show your neighbor, show your boss, show your employees, show your coworkers, show your community, your town, your city, your county, and your state why the things you voted for were so important. Be active. Be a part of this nation. Because if you're not, your voice won't get heard. That's what happened last time. America got quiet. The working class got quiet. The millennials took to Twitter and Instagram And they're the ones everyone heard from and Facebook and social media and Snapchat and Tumblr and this and that. And they're the ones the press talked to. And they just, they, that's where, that's where Washington got its idea of what America is. And thankfully, Washington was wrong. But the people that spoke up, even though you spoke up all along, you only spoke out loud yesterday. The part of America that voted last night is, I think, a large part, people like my dad. He's not here anymore. He passed away years ago. But he would have been one of those types. He sits around at home. He's an old, older guy. He'd sit around at home and complain about what Obama was doing. And he'd talk about it with the family, I would imagine. Or he'd talk about it on the front porch. But he didn't go on Facebook because he didn't have Facebook. He didn't go on Twitter. He used a telephone to call people. That was it. I don't think he ever used a phone for a calculator, even though it could do that before he died. But that's who came out to vote. A lot of blue collar, a lot of dirty, dirt under the fingernails, grease on the face, tired working Americans. They don't tweet. You know, they don't. They aren't on the Facebook. (laughs) Um, they were a big silent majority last night, but they're out there. So if you're one of them, I'm not saying you got to change your life and go get on, get accounts on Facebook. You don't, but be more vocal. Call up a local newspaper. Tell them your thoughts. Write the paper. Write somebody. Be active in your community. Let people see that the values that you instilled in this generation behind us that we all agree so obviously failed weren't the values you intended. Because America has a president now that a lot of people didn't intend now that they got him. Let's show America why he's the right choice. Those of you that are in that party, myself included, stand up you know, by the bootstraps, pick it up, and let's get to work. You have a chance to really make America great again, and I'm not a Trump fan or anything else. I just voted for him, but that was his slogan, and that's fine. He said he's going to do it, but he can't do it. I mean, he just can't. But we actually, as a people, can. America's great in a lot of ways, but America has a lot of rifts that divide it and have tore it not apart, but along with, have tore a long way apart. It's time to put those back together to make the fabric that makes us who we are strong again and 
to go back to being the leader of the free world. But do it without being broke. Do it without... Do it with some common sense. We're not going to take in the whole world's refugee population because that's not who we are. We're not the world's babysitters. We're not the world's refugee camp. I'm sorry. That's reality. It's, it's where we live. It's not our job to take in every refugee from every bad person that ever did a bad thing. If you want us to solve those kinds of things, then we go kill the bad people and let those people keep their homes. That's the actual solution. We don't just take them in. That's, that's a dumb solution. It's never been a smart solution. That's one of those things I think Trump has a right idea on. You know, um, it's going to be an interesting place. I could talk all morning, but I'm not going to. I'm done here. Again, sorry I look like hell. If you had any idea how, how exhausting an eight-hour video stream is. Um, I'll talk to you soon. This is Tommy Jordan. Hopefully you'll subscribe, like, follow, etc. Till next time.